sing. I'm also what would very your, fat. What would Anyways, be, what would I be think your walk up song if you were oh, had a walk up song into question. life? When you wake up in the morning, what's your wake you up song? You know what our walk up song today is? Something to do with drab. What? Uh, who oh, yeah. dressed us? This is like. I, I figured on I figured mine because of my wife. You know that song, Walking on Sunshine? Sure. Mine is I'm Walking on Eggshells. Oh, really? It just turned out to be my theme song for this week. <laughs> And that's exactly what I've been singing. But I'm if we were dressed in eggshell, that would at least be up. Hey, it's the yeah. drill. We we haven't hey. been here. We've missed you so much. We really have. And it was really not your fault. It wasn't anything you said or did. It was just circumstances beyond our control that meant we couldn't be, be here, which is mainly because John and Eric felt they needed some space. Yeah. And... Uh, and have been on their own for a while. We're going to talk about that later. They needed food, so we they do worked. have other jobs. We, yeah, we do. <laughs> we do other work. <laughs> so do we. We just don't broadcast it. We have another <laughs> job. It's called loving we you. We literally <laughs> broadcast <laughs> it. <Tom. laughs> we have nothing to broadcast. So I think it's been what three weeks, a month since we we last did a drill. Something like that. Yeah. And and of course the whole country's been yeah. in upheaval. So we're back. And Tommy, just to show you how <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, and transitory sports are. I wrote down some of the things that I had written for shows when I thought we were going to do shows in the past couple of weeks. And to show yeah. <laughs> in sports, it, it kind of makes the point that shows like this are ridiculous. Yeah, they pretty much are, about. yeah. So the first thing There's I have... There's no shelf life to any of this. Dod this is a couple of weeks ago. Dodgers are going, going, gone. Time to tear this team <laughs> down, starting with Matt Kemp. <laughs> get his <laughs> right. ass out of here. Right, and now I'm at the Goodwill store trying to get the shirt that I donated five years ago. <laughs> Because it's now retro cool to wear a Kemp shirt. Matt Kemp shirt, right? Yeah. He's totally. I, I think he was Player of the Week last week. Yes, he leads the National League in hitting. Oh my it's god! It's just preposterous. Oh god! Yeah, and the team that I, I I'm not kidding. We, we actually did this on a, a show about a month ago. I really did think that okay, that's it for them. They're done. And I think they're as we they sit today. They were ten games under 500 in the middle of April. And we're, they're two games out now. They're t even now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're, oh, two games out of first place, though. Yeah. They're out of 500. Yeah, they're at yeah. 500. And in the National League West, where you everybody's at 500 pretty much, you're in, It in helped to have the Diamondbacks completely fall yeah. apart. I Everyone's going to at this point. And that's yeah, the thing. I thought happens. the division was yeah. going to be really good this year. I thought the Giants would be better. The yeah. Diamondbacks, off of last year, I thought would be a, an outstanding team. And the Rockies, who can ever know because they're kind of mutants. But even the Padres <laughs> are still in it. I mean, they're like five games out. They're a really nice young team. I mean, Are they you really? see some of the hitters they've got there. Yeah. They've got a great future. Weird. Just no pitching. They're just sticking around just to spite you. That's all. I it know. Is. Yeah. Second one: Rockets versus Celtics. Who you got? I don't even remember that series. <laughs> they, they, both the Celtics and Rockets were ahead in their series, yeah. and then there you go. Who yeah. cares, really? I, Such I really a cavalier don't. attitude yeah. we have toward that. But we got John John here. He's a Cleveland boy. John hey, John. As we sit. <laughs> Your team's down 0-2, but going yes, back. Yes, uh, they're they're going home, going home. Uh, what the, I saw a great stat. It's uh, LeBron James teams when down 0-2 are three and four historically. That's not too bad. Not a bad bad record. Very right. Going down 0-2, where it's something like all other teams are like 16 and 186. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something like that. They're not. Gonna, right. They're not going to get swept. Please. I hope I'm at yeah. this point. You know. Um, I, I I have gripes. Uh, I could gripe all I want about Game One's officiating. Yes, uh, absolutely. No. J.R. Smith's blunder. Yes. Um, so this is what I want to know. Give me a time and a place. Where were you when the J.R. Smith thing happened? Uh, we were in my hotel room uh, in Palo Alto, California. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know I can't completely blame him because I had kind of forgot what the score was at that oh, point yeah. too. Yeah. It was. And then I did not. Yeah. I was very. <laughs> Schmeeds was yeah he was quite angry, um, yeah so that's when that happened. But like I was still I couldn't get over the the reversal of the charge call. Completely agree. Uh, yeah. I still could. I was still. I didn't even know that you could do that. that. I didn't either. That was ridiculous. How do they just throw this rule into the game? At Th that was that one point. of those things where, Apparently like, you've been a rule for five years, but it's never been used. You know, <laughs> you, that was one of those things. Like, if you, in basketball culture, if you go play on someone else's court in their neighborhood, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all of a sudden they yeah. rip out a rule, yeah, like, right. oh, it's a rule here that <laughs> right. if you score the first two, that doesn't count. Like, what? Yeah. When they did that, I was like, well, what could they be looking at? That's a judgment call. And you yeah, can't, it's absolute yeah. judgment. It, call. it seemed like almost yeah, like uh, house rules and beer pong and yeah, shit. Like, yeah. It was, uh, I felt so bad too, because that's the kind of, that's the kind of thing that happens. Like, 
if I was on the court, I would want to start crying if I was LeBron or something like that. And I feel so bad for him. The thing where he sits down, then he finds out they also had a timeout. It's like yeah, the video came out was not that yeah. that that made Ty Lue look pretty pretty uh, yeah. horrible. Yeah. Which you can't say that he's been a you know stellar coach uh, his entire career. No. Any, I wouldn't say LeBron just ever had a stellar yeah. coach. Everybody there is placeholder like, except for LeBron. Yeah, but Pat Riley, which was not even his coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, knowing how many timeouts you have, that's pretty far down. Like that, that's in the basic area of what a coach does. You know what I mean? You have assistants that just do that. that exactly. Yeah. They have clipboards and everything, That's and they point they to it all the yeah. time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, throw that one away. Here, add this one. Clayton Kershaw is back, and this time for good. <laughs> well, back is the operative word. Oh. What about Clayton Kershaw's back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. His back is not good. You know what, boys, though? This points out something that nobody seems to want to talk about yet, that the Dodgers are in a Kobe situation. Their great, great star is definitely on the backside, getting hurt a lot, not producing like he used to. From what I understand, Kershaw has an option for next season. I will guess that he is going to exercise that and get his $30 million. After that, I think he becomes a free agent. I, think, I, hope, I hope the Dodgers learn from the Lakers, which is sometimes it's best to say to your great star, it's been wonderful, yeah. it's time for you to go. Or as Matt Kemp proves, you can come back again. <laughs> It's just a t- just a little detour. We'll let you go play a couple years in right. Texas. And Age is nothing but a number to Matt yeah. Kemp. <laughs> right. <laughs> but as we've we've spoken about before, this might be a good thing for the Dodgers. Sometimes I think they depend too heavily on Clayton Kershaw. Oh yeah. Yeah. You see all the situations when the star of the team goes down and the team gels and does better. Right. I'm so many times. In this case, though, when you you've lost four of your five starting pitchers to some weird injuries. Yeah, you start to feel snake bit when when you don't and, recognize. And one of them was to a snake bite. So that <laughs> bizarre, <laughs> and that weird. It, it's it's an interesting time if they can just sustain 500, you know, through the yes. next few months. I think 88 wins wins the division. Wasn't wasn't it last year? Uh, I don't remember exactly. They're crazy that 50 game stretch they had where they only lost like seven yeah. seven yeah. games it or whatever like it was. Yeah, and seven or something. Uh, like that, yeah. w- wasn't half of that without Kershaw? Yes. Oh yeah. So absolutely, they've yeah. proven it. They can be hot and they can go on rolls without them. Uh, yeah, but you're you're not wrong on them leaning and too heavily happens. on them. I mean, that's happening right now. Robinson Cano uh, got yeah. thrown off his team. Yeah. Yeah. Seattle is suddenly the yeah. best. Best team well, in Seattle baseball. was way better first when A Rod left. What's that? They're in first place. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. See, that's weird. Sometimes that you can lose your best player and become better for some reason. Everyone's it's like when we lost Beto. You rely. Yeah, we are. B- <laughs> I think that's a perfect analogy. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Beto. Didn't we gain somebody? We gained. I count five people. We in the we room. have gained someone. We did. We've gained back here where you room. can't see is our friend Nicole. She's a. Uh, 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 here, she's going to be working on the show, and yeah. she's also Nicole, looking jump up. In. Jump yeah, in the yeah. Shop. She's <laughs> also trying to blackmail us by finding stuff online about. That's true. Look, it's this Nicole. Can you hear Nicole? Hi. That's Nicole. Okay. She's our new intern for the <laughs> summer. It works. I'll be back. It works. Hi, Nicole. Yeah. There she's you go. She's finding out all the dirt that we need to uh, yeah. post and looking up Tom and Steve as we speak. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. a dangerous, dangerous proposition. Don't go too deep. I'm telling you. <laughs> no. I'm definitely not deep. Our probation officer said it was okay to be here. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> now, I hope everyone can see this. My uh, my I voted sticker. Oh, I thought it was just one word. I, I thought that was the new person on the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> I voted. I voted. Um, this proves, number one, that I voted yesterday in our big election, and number two, that I really should change my clothes more often. It's disgusting. You slept in yes. that badge. Yes. But it's this nice. points out the fact that sports increasingly – has become politicized. And as we sit here today, there was a big kerfuffle about the Philadelphia Eagles going to the White House and the White House rescinding the invite, which was odd since the Eagles said they didn't want to go anyways. Yeah. So it's like someone breaking up with you and you, you know, then saying... I don't know what that's like, yeah, so exactly. I, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Ten players were committed to going. Ten players were committed to going. So the, they pull it and they claim the reason, the White House claimed the reason they were pulling it, was because um, of the um, the anthem uh, uh, controversy and that the Eagles um, were taking knees and they didn't like that. And as it turns out, the Eagles are one of the teams that had nobody taking a knee. Unless you watch Fox News mm-hmm. where you see some video players taking knees, which 
was taken completely out of context and I thought was horribly journalistically flawed um, and but but shows kind of where you get your news and what you interpret and you have to call out stuff like that right the video seemed pretty obvious that that was not what they were doing well especially since there are people running yeah. behind them yeah. it's clearly they're praying yeah it's I, I don't know in this day and age if we put that out is a good thing for your image as far as Fox it got promotion right right and, and it just doesn't seem like it's uh, there's the checks and balances anymore it just seem to be like oh you're just a hater or you you're just trying to call things out for, it's like this is be be honest <laughs> be fair and accurate I think you're right <laughs> though sometimes people are like well you're wrong but you're wrong in my opinion sphere yeah so that's good it's, we like yeah, that yeah if, w when did facts ever matter in some you know of these it's cases? interesting because a lot of people have mentioned now how so many of the NFL owners have kind of kowtowed to the White House and that um, the White House feels kind of emboldened to kind of do things but they will also mention there are some owners. There's uh, the Yorks Lurie. in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. There's, of course, the Roonies in Pittsburgh. There are the Johnsons for the New York Jets. And it got me to thinking, again, we haven't had to deal with this for, no, uh, for yeah. a couple decades yeah. about owners. And I, I want to do, do a little segment called Know, know your, your Owner. Owner. All right, so we got the Rams and we got the Chargers. So as far we'll, as we know. So we don't know exactly where they are on the anthem thing. but I can guess for one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? The Chargers. <laughs> Do you mean because Dean Spanos gave thousands of dollars to Rick Perry's campaign and Rick Perry is now the Secretary of Energy? I don't know if, if that has anything to do with it, but um, I'm guessing somewhat of a... Somewhat? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, when there was that big deal uh, and Trump you know, called the, you know, you should be fired, critical of the team, critical of teams back in September 17th, I found here that Spanos, uh, you know, put out a statement that was... What did he say? I mean, I, I wholeheartedly agree with the commissioner's statement. The NFL and the players have been a force of good. What our country needs now is a message of unity. Okay, now we so, like him. Yeah, I mean, he was he was on the good guy side, I think, in that part. Um, but you're right. You've got to look at who donates what because there is um, all kinds of evidence that shows that uh, the other owner in town... Has Stan Kroenke has, has made Rams. a lot of political contributions to the Trump campaign. As as is about, I think a, there's a core of about eight owners that have really. So he's put a their strong. Money, he, he's put his money behind Trump. And he's also part of the Walmart people yeah. who have never been accused the of being hippies. Pe yeah. yeah. Also, <laughs> Stan Kroenke. See, I, when I was researching this, I was like, well, what kind of clues do we have to what yeah. his political outlook would be? So one was, well, look at that. He not only owns a soccer team, he owns a soccer team from London. That would give him a certain world view, right? A certain sophistication. But the other thing he does in England is he owns a channel called My Outdoor TV <laughs> that featured hunts of things like African elephants. You know, because that's, that's just sweet. Everyone yeah, loves that. Yeah, he got a lot of blowback for that. Yes. He had to sort of take all that stuff down. Well, he did take it down, but yeah. only because people criticized yeah, him for yeah. it. It so was a channel that no one really knew about until you saw what was on it, and then you go, eh, it's probably <laughs> not a good idea. Sort of celebrate this stuff. Right. But, yeah, I, the research I showed that uh, Trump's inauguration, $7.52 million was donated by Woody Johnson, Jets, Redskins, Dan Snyder, Robert Kraft, obviously, right. Jerry Jones. Uh, you got the uh, Jacksonville, Texas, Gee, Tampa Donovan. Bay, and now in the Rams. But, see, this is, again, this is why this is, it, it, it's complicated because Woody Johnson did that, but his son is the one who stood up against it. Right. Him. And then with Spanos, it's not. Alex, it's uh, Dean. Know, Dean yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's not always easy. Yeah. It, until Did you say Jacksonville in there? Yeah. So he con. Yeah. Yeah. He so donated yeah. to Trump. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I did not. Uh, I did not really expect that one to be yeah. honest. It, it's not very linear because I think everything's about self-interest. Yeah. It's, and so yeah. they'll donate to Trump yeah. when it's uh, maybe self-interest for their tax uh, taxes, things like that. But I think NFL owners are coming to realize. They need to be partners with the players. They're not going to win that. And so they want to look very conciliatory with the players. And I think the players look at, like, the NBA and think that's the model we the want. The NBA model is very much encouraged to, you know, state what you believe in, will back you up, the right. commissioner's behind them. Which is why they've yeah. never taken a knee yeah. in the NBA. They haven't had to. They it's against the rules in the NBA. They've it had is. it in, that, in the mm. bylaws for a while now right there are very yeah things these things come up where when you're a member of a certain organization there are rules you have to abide by when you're wearing the uniform and that's 
um, you know, one of the things that the players have to sort of address. And the other problem is too is that this beca this has become in in all sorts of these discussions, it's become a national anthem protest, which it never was. Never. It was a protest during a national anthem, and again, that gets all lumped together, and the semantics get get thrown together. So. Um, you would think in Hollywood, where where the communication is important and getting the right message out, um, that these owners would just kind of take a better stand and be more transparent about what they believe in. Right. I don't think we've seen that. We've sort of had to dig a little bit to find right. out what th where these guys are all about. NFL owners, for the most part, um, I think have always been the most kind of um, reticent to uh, to be public about stuff. I don't know. It's because they're the super rich or whatever. NBA owners certainly have no problem about making themselves known, and, e and even... They love the attention. Right, and even major league owners have always been, uh, you know, because those, te those teams have been owned by families for so long. Yeah, it's family business. NFL yeah. owners uh, can be somewhat mysterious. Yeah it's, yeah, it's almost like the communications business, too, where it used to be owned by families because they wanted this, this clout and this access to certain things. Yeah. They wanted access to the presidency. Um, same with the NFL owners. They wanted just access to things like this where they could have... Uh, you know, a, a seat at the table if the right. president, you know, was going to offer them one. So, you just, again, get to know your owners. Do That's a little right. research. Know your owner. Uh, depends on how you vote on certain things. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's. Well, my thing is that, I mean, look, it, it doesn't matter which side you're on. California no, is, it the, really doesn't. is the bluest state in the union. L.A. and San Francisco are the bluest cities in the bluest state. Up until now, we've had uh, ownership, the most recent ownership with the Dodgers. Magic Johnson's a part of that. The bus, the buses with the Lakers, and of course that liberal icon Donald Sterling. Um, so, um, but they they they're used to a certain type of ownership, an open kind of, and so Crunky and Spanos definitely different. Well, then there's the whole sidebar which I find fascinating as, to, as well. When when Trump was a USFL USFL owner, his main goal was to get an NFL team, right? And sort of feels like he's been rebuffed in that regard. Right. So uh, there's great documentaries out there about the USFL uh, and, and Trump's involvement with that, with with owning the uh, small potatoes being yeah. the one that I'm sure you guys yeah. are referencing. The New Jersey the Generals that he owned with Doug Flutie and Herschel Walker, and it was it was sort of uh, his his goal was to forget the league as right. long as I survive and get right. this thing, which is you know basically it's it's his M.O. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how does how does yeah. it not fit into his personality? Right. Yeah. But uh, uh, so, th so there, there's an illustration, too, that we wanted to sort of yeah. introduce to this. Was We'll take a look at that right now. Jim Thompson, yeah. our illustrator, has sort of taken his position on it, too. And, and it's not a knee-jerk position. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Jim you know, kind of explaining how. Uh, the, the only I, I love this, except I, c I can't uh, distinguish whether the eagle <laughs> is is hiding his head in shame or dabbing. <laughs> What is oh, he's which is shameful. He's praying. He's praying. Okay. He's praying. Definitely praying. He's yeah. praying to God that please <laughs> make this man stop. <laughs> Just, jeez, will you please stop? Oh, no. my God. Why stop does he it. look at me when he says that? Yeah. Uh, of course I have it. <laughs> hey, so uh, let's go to the, the biz. The biz. The biz. The biz. The biz. <laughs> Thinking about the business. <laughs> Is this so what do you want to talk about? Yep. A segue to the business. Yep. Um, so while we were away, we had a Supreme Court decision ruling about uh, gambling on sports. Which I predicted. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> me. That wasn't me. It was definitely me. I called it. Was I, that uh, Beto? No, it was, oh. me. it was me. Was that vote close, by the way? The what? The Supreme Court vote. What was it? Uh, it was six, six, six to three. three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Which is the score we Oh, good, because I had 50 bucks on that. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, that great. Yeah. <laughs> beat the spread. <laughs> right, it did beat the spread. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Way to go, Ginsburg. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of uh, talk, you know, right away, what's the ramifications going to be about? How is this going to change the way we watch sports? I thought the best uh, recent story that I pulled up about this was from the Wall Street Journal, which basically had the headline that said, uh, gambling is coming, so let's get ready to hate sports. That's right. And yes. the mercenary yes. aspect of sports is one, you know, there's all kinds of storylines and narratives about this. We've seen Delaware now uh, become the first state to sort of get on board with this. Um, what's going to be the uh, push to get to people to bet on sports? Is it going to be brick and mortar, you know, places they walk into? Well, maybe. But mostly it's obviously your phone. Your yes. phone is where you're going to do most of right. your damage with apps and things that this comes up. Right. And uh, I... First of all, I was just thinking about, do you gamble much at all? 
No, I really I don't, don't. I don't either. No, I really don't. And I think, though, that that I might be, excuse me, the um, one of the targets, like someone who's into sports but wouldn't normally bet. Like, every, like maybe once a year my friend who does bet, uh, hey, give him 50 bucks and, you know, bet this for me. Um, I think they're going to be looking for me. And, and you're right. The key to this is going to be making it – it's going to be just like weed, basically. They're going to have to make it as – well, it's true. They're going to have to make it as clean yeah. and respectable as, right. as possible. Right. And they're going to have to make it so easy. If I have to go through hoops or do this, I'm not going to do it. That's why they're going to want it to be on yeah. my phone so I can just do it real simple, blah, 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 and I'm who, done. Who bets in the room? Does anybody? Um, I When I'm in Vegas or Reno or whatever, I'll place a few random bets. Are they really are they like the prop bets or like like, you look, are like the long-term sort of like? No, I'll, it, I'll do a couple. It, it varies on uh, what time of year it is. Like uh, last time I was in Reno doing uh, G League stuff, I did a three-team uh, hockey parlay and won on that. Uh you know, I you bet I, 20 bucks, you win 95. It's a good time. I thought, I, I thought he was going to say bet on the G League, and I was saying you're a degenerate. <laughs> no. <laughs> did you bet no, on Vegas to go I've to got Omaha. You, did you have a Vegas bet? I don't make a lot of bets after my uh, hockey minute predictions. <laughs> <laughs> that's Clean coming. out in the first round. That's coming. Because uh, I, I think that sort of is what the sports are looking like, how it, it's engagement, what they're talking about, right? Yeah. This is going to engage you into their sport in a whole different way. Right. Whether you uh, whether TV ratings are going down or not, I still think the sports is still the best reality show going. But the You're journal gonna, hits it exactly what you just said, is we all here in this room love sports for the drama, for the the competition and all that. This is going to be a continuation yeah, of we, the fantasy nightmare. Well, we don't want to see sports just get pulled down into this that, that, that some guy discussion. R- some guy's running towards the yeah. end zone, and the guy cheers. And then in the next play, he's rooting for the other team. You're like, what yeah, the yeah, hell? And then you realize he's just all he cares a, about is, yeah, is this fantasy if, points. I, I don't like being in a mercenary situation of watching sports. What, how, do you, how do you feel about the sports betting? Do you want to come on and ask anything about it? you need a mic? All right. Because the sports betting bring to me. Bring in Nicole in. The, bring in the young yeah. mind. Uh, how old are you, first of all? I'm 20. Okay, okay. so you're yeah. not even legally allowed no. oh, yeah. to gamble. I will s- so I've never done it. Okay. Obviously, because oh. it would be highly illegal. Right. Yes. Yeah. But I have a lot of family friends who have, especially, like, I go to UGA, University of Georgia, go dogs. Um, but they definitely have bet on that, those games. Who, your family members? Not my fam- family friends. She is Super. flipping on her family friends. This I won't is great. That's all right. You don't have to. We already we already know. I will say that it's very common and it gets people involved in the game mm-hmm. and very into it. They right. obviously want the team to win that they bet for. Right. So I will say that whether it's morally right or wrong, yeah. I think that it definitely gets people involved in the game more than it was prior. Then that's what they're hoping for. Yeah, is it, that it the is more engaging. money you have on it and that's what's so annoying about it. Is right. is now, go ahead. She, she brought in a, a, a southern perspective, by the way, with the morally. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but she by the way, morality, do that here, yeah. and, and that's uh, <laughs> yeah. when gambling is involved, morality is out the window. <laughs> out the window, that's true. I think it, it adds a certain spice. It, well, it can, but it also can add a certain guy putting his hand through a wall exactly. or dudes getting in fights or dude just t- it, it, You know what it's like? Here's how old I am. I used to go to punk clubs and see like Red Hot Chili Peppers when they would come on naked, right, and do all this kind of stuff. Then every everything kind of went mainstream, and then like I'm just, just talking happened? to some some dude in a suit, and he'll go like, "Oh yeah, man, I, uh, I like the Chili Peppers." I'm like, "Shut up!" You used to be into Christopher Cross. Oh, you that's know what right. I mean? yeah. That's what I'm saying. These guys are they're it's going to bring in people who are not hardcore so, sports people. So you're 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 what you're saying is you're upset that uh, businessmen and uh, and lawyers and stuff are going to be get betting on sports and not people that you're afraid of in a pool hall. No, what I'm saying is I'd <laughs> like to see the Chili Peppers naked again. It just yeah. really was an old so time for me. That was my take. Old. <laughs> they are really old. Very old. Yeah, I I think, but but it's it's here. And again, just like weed, it was something that it was just going to happen. It, there's no way of of going back. You it can't was going to happen. Yeah. It was going to happen. But I do want to hear different perspectives because I don't want to have just my opinion about. I, I'm not. I've never been a good. I've been good at predicting scores, which I I don't want to, you know, tout because then people start <laughs> asking me what do you. But uh, it's just based on knowledge, and I right. think more of the information that we're going to start seeing in the media is knowledge or information that's going to be used for mm-hmm. gambling. It, it already is, but now it's just going to be more out there because ESPN 
NBC, a lot of these cable shows now are going to have their own gambling sort of shows. shows. Well, and I yeah. think that's only the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to be seeing whole channels. I mean, the same way yeah. that you have Fox Financial. There already is one that uh, Brett Musburger's on. That's right. right. And, v- and VSIN. A, yeah. a good VSIN. friend of mine, Rick Jaffe, is the guy who runs that yeah. thing. And they knew, but they knew that going ahead that this w- this decision was going to happen. When I did, when I went out to Vegas in March during uh, March Madness, um, yeah, oh yeah, this was this was their plan. Right. This was the, they knew this was going to happen. They want to be the sports information related to gambling to get out there. They want to uh, just make uh, uh, numbers and and these things be part of the discussion. Right. And I'm amazed at how accurate these guys are in mm-hmm. predicting scores and stuff like that too. But. Um, it, 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 it's the the red carpet's been rolled out for this to happen, and there's no doubt it's going to make sports bigger. I, it, it's if if you look at how sports are already done across the world, gambling is yeah. incorporated yeah. all over the place, right? Um, and there hasn't been any sort of blowback as far as everybody on the take or anything right. like no. that. No, right. And in years past, when we've had some somebody like that or something like that, it's always been the legal bet makers right. that have uncovered any sort of shady exactly. shit because they have all the money on the line and That's it's their right. giant ass profits right. that are that are potentially getting screwed. So right. they're going to try to make it more fair than anything. And now with the governments getting involved, state governments are all going to get involved. It's going to be, uh, you know, talking real legal penalties yes. for, for some sort of fixing. Way more stringent and hardcore than before. Cause and right now, have you seen they do these the ridiculous things when you get your, your um, ticket? It's like the warning on a, on a, <laughs> yeah. a cigarette box. Yeah. There's so many gambling talk about, addiction yeah. Thing. As Surgeon if, like, you General get the warning. cigarettes and, what, yeah. this was unhealthy? What? what? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So they, they, right now they're doing that. But, uh, yeah, the thing, the thing that's going to really change, like you said, is the technology that's not going to – it's not just going to be, do you think the Rams are going to beat the Chargers? It's going to be, do you think – Jared Goff will throw an interception in the first half, and you'll be able to bet on what, it. And during games, yeah, during games. What I'm really games. looking forward to, and this is where I, I think it's going to happen, is when uh, the Rams stadium opens up in Inglewood, it's on the site of the old Hollywood Park Casino, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right. So uh, what better place to have a sports book? I should be able to go <laughs> yep. at 8 a.m. in the, you know, and, and get there, you know, have uh, my brunch and mimosas or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I Who should are be you? Uh, whatever. Sean is so brunchy. Whatever. <laughs> no, they, have a pink brunch. St- they have a pink's, ho- they have a, they have a pink's hot dog stand in the Hollywood <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Pink's hot John, dog they got <laughs> crepes. <laughs> yeah. Crepes? Oh, hell yeah. I'm down on crepes all the Crepe time. Crepe hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, hot dog yeah. crepes. All right. Um, but, no, you should be able to gamble on uh, whatever morning sports yeah. are going on, whether right. it's soccer or something going on in the yeah. U.K. Um, and then uh, – yeah, you know, bet on the morning games. Watch all those I right guess. at the, you know, the 10 a.m. games, and then you I'm guessing be able the to smart place the play bets for the one o'clock game that you're about to sit and watch. And at halftime, yeah. you cash in on your first half bets and make second half bets. What a pleasant picture you, make, you yeah, just yeah, it is. It's gonna, mm. it's gonna great, be. You are making America be, great again. He had me at mimosas. It's gonna be so. fantastic. Yes, you it's know, true. And I think the play is to invest. And the teams are gonna own these old sports books. That's, yeah, right. that's yeah. where they're gonna make even more money. I'm going to invest in gambling recovery centers. What is that? You know, we're, oh, oh, where, where we end up going. Would go. yeah, 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 exactly. I think that's going to be a uh, profitable. No, my, my, when this went down, my son in San Francisco texted me and said, is it possible sports will get bigger? And I'm like, yes. Bigger. It's, it's incredible, yeah. but it's yeah. actually going to get well, bigger. Well, it's bringing a, we already know that there's a gigantic gambling market in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a black market. Well, right. But just the weed analogy well. is perfect because yeah. that's what it is. It's right. there. It's, it's always been there. It's there. It's Let's always just make been it, there. Why is it you know, not legal? Rather yeah. than stupid otherwise. Right. Who is it hurting? Right. It's it's better to, and if, you know, of course there's always the black market settlement. Mm-hmm. If there's some sort of dispute, you can bring it out to a judge and to a lawyer. Right. Instead of having to break somebody's kneecaps behind the bar. Right. Exactly. The only difference will be from weed. Will you won't be able to smell it on them. You got the caps. Plus, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you just have that vision of Biff from Back to the Future owning all these casinos, <laughs> right? Uh. This could have been fixed, right? Someone's going to get the almanac and predict all the scores, and then we have a Biff from Back to the Future yeah. story later. In Boom! <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> hey, uh, somewhere Speaking of in which, yeah. somewhere in that discussion, I, I I heard someone mention the Golden Knights. So I think it is time yeah. for Eric's Speaking of which, Hockey Minute. We need a Hockey Minute. And based on the fact that on what we are, today is June 6th of the June 19th. June 6th. 
Uh, yeah. Year of Our Lord, 2018. There we go. 2018. How is uh, the future of hockey sitting between the Washington of capitalism and the capitalistic market of Las Vegas? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I don't know what you it. try to do there, but <laughs> yeah, it didn't either. necessarily work. <laughs> Let the man go. Oh, I just fly. I'm flying up the seat of my pants. Good. I think it's Hockey's over, guys. Don't I think talk it's, about your pants. I think it's Washington. Who's going to capitalize most Okay, but, but okay, so. It, oh, it, you're going on a limb now? It's over. I know oh. <laughs> I, I know. it's what 32 straight teams up 3-1 have won the Stanley Cup. But most of those teams were named the Red Wings or the Blackhawks. Oh, yeah. There's all those teams. Penguins. This is th- there is failure. This is the chokingest team yeah. in the history yeah. of the yeah. NHL. So now yeah. let me what ask you this. The thing is don't read into the past. There's a different Capitals team. Oh, oh that's, yeah. That's changed I everything. Kinda, I kind of think he's right. Uh, they, oh, no. They've slayed all of their dragons so far this year, mm-hmm. beating oh, the no, Penguins. No, no. Yes. Yeah. Getting through the – getting to the conference right. finals in general. But let me just paint a picture for you. Paint us a word picture. I'm going to hear. Okay, so you go back to Vegas. The crowd is crazy. Oh, yeah. And they, and they do a typical game. Uh, Fleury stands on his head, and they beat him 2-1, 3-1, right. something like that. Vegas is tough. Now you're going back to Washington. The game six crowd. You're up 3-2, but that game, in a way, is game seven. It's too much pressure. For the Washington Capitals, yeah. who are – well known for choking in big time they games. Choke like Couldn't Russian you see them dogs. choking that game, going back to Vegas and getting beat? Yeah, game seven in Vegas. You know, I'm Ovechkin's I'm possessed right now. Yeah, I, I don't believe it. But it's not even him, right? It's uh, it's he's I, scoring I, every game, Tom. Come on. It, but, but it's not been him. It's <laughs> I would say you're better than that, but I, I know game, better than that. It, so yeah. But it's <laughs> bigger than him. It, it's it. They're deeper Eric, team. You, it's not just him and LeBron. It, you can't compare him like LeBron. It's no. a deep team. Oh no, yeah. In fact, Kuznetsov has been probably their best offensive player in the yeah, playoffs, all right? Yeah, season long. But yeah. they all they all feed off of Ovechkin. That's true. Now let me ask you about Ovechkin. Okay, I, I've I've. He has kind of a Jerry West quality, this really great player who can't get over the hump, and so he's kind of this tragic figure. Um, but I don't know. It, it, Alex Ovechkin, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he a prima donna? He seems to be a kind of guy who's willing to hit, willing to do the dirty work, all that kind of stuff. What do you think? Yeah, I think he's a likable guy. Yeah. I mean, as an NHL fan, I've always liked Ovi. Yeah. More than Crosby? Um, I respect Crosby. I'll never yeah. say anything bad about him. That's why I was picking the pens the whole way. It's just... It's disrespectful to, <laughs> to pick against the, the two-time uh, defending champs. I'm still going with Vegas. Johnny, yeah, what do you think of right. Ovechkin? What do you think of Ovechkin? Uh, like, personally? Just as, like, as, a, yeah, like is he a rootable you person? My, you root I can't him? root for him because yeah. he's, he's, he's Ovechkin. He yeah. I, I do, too. I'm saying yeah, but, but I, I've talked with Celtic fans who would always say I respected West. West was great and all this kind I of stuff. I have no... I have no allegiance to Ovechkin winning. Mm. I, I also have my 80s uh, prejudice of Russians uh, from Rocky IV and Red Dawn. There you yes, go. Yeah. There you go. It's hard to shed that. And our present political situation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Besides that, yeah. There a you Russian go. Yeah. controlling a team in D.C. does not make sense. Oh, no. Me. That's that's Yeah, that's yeah. really bad. It's pretty obvious. I mean, right? <laughs> it's right in front of your face. But, yeah, I like, I like Washington. I think Washington's the first team that can actually skate with Vegas. Yeah. Vegas has been playing these – these heavy teams that they just skate circles around, but Washington actually has the skill players to match up with them. Eric, I, I would say um, uh, hockey is one sport where we see all kinds of teams make the finals, lose the finals, and completely disappear for seasons on end. What it, what is what is your thoughts for the future of the Golden Knights? That's what I've been trying to figure out this yeah. whole time. I mean, yeah. I think this story is incredible. I mean, Lady Luck's run out on Vegas, mm-hmm. it looks like, but... No. Do they have staying power? Mm. I don't know. That's that's, that's a tough division. Yeah. And a lot of guys are having career years. Yeah. I, I couldn't st- tell you that I know for sure. Not that my opinion matters. I think Vegas wins, and then they fold the franchise. <laughs> it's a walk-off. One for one. One for one. Yep. What, can you, what else can you do? It's like the perfect story, right? Yeah, that is true. It you is. should King, just say Kings fans will 1, still 000. say they got two cups to Vegas, yeah. even though they're one for one. <laughs> 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 it's all percentages. It's percentages. Hey, you know, it's been so long since we've done this show. I'm kind of wrapping it up here. Yep. That I've, I really feel the need to update you on my raccoon situation. Sure. Which so many people have reached out to me. Your cards, your letters, your prayer rugs, everything. Just I, I really do appreciate it. So here it is. I made a Daniel Boone cap just for you. Right. Uh, Lego art. Yeah. Um, <laughs> interpretive dances. So many <laughs> things. Thank you. Um the update is the raccoons are apparently gone. 
Now, I don't know if this is just... Is it a zombie situation? uh, Well, or I don't know if it's just they're on vacation. But we didn't hear them for several days. So I made the executive decision. I knew where they were getting in and getting out. And I boarded it up praying that I wasn't keeping them in there and then they would go berserko. And we haven't heard anything for weeks. So it's, uh, it's been great. No raccoons. Where do raccoons go on vacation? Canada. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sure. Are they seasonal animals? I mean, this was their... I, I, I say this because I have a peafowl problem in my oh, neighborhood. Oh, okay. Where peafowl mating season goes from March to October, which is pretty much like the baseball season, you know? Wow, yeah. And the males, you know, very dominant, very loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> That's it. The mating season goes on from March till when? Till October, which is wow. pretty much like That's humans. That's pretty much all year. It's pretty much like humans. Getting it done. Um, yeah, you have your pea fowls, your pea hens, and your peacocks. And yeah. so you have to know which one is which. Yeah. Well, and wait, is pea fowl all of them? Uh, I think. Uh, I believe so. Pea fowl is all of them. Well, that's more generic because it's like the word Uranus. You just don't hear it used in science anymore. You're just saying really things right now that yeah. I just uncomfortable it's, with. It's yeah. pea fowl, just not it, it. Right. It's more of the generic vernacular, but uh, we do have the problems. We don't like to catch them because they're very uh, mean. And the other problem that they have is they see the reflection in a car. Yeah. And they start attacking it. <laughs> So you a lot of car damage issues in, really? the, in the neighborhood. Yeah, it's very weird. Um, but you know, if you don't have a peafowl problem, no, 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 we don't have a, great. I don't live in those kinds of neighborhoods that have problems yeah. with peafowl. And no. very yeah. odd yeah. birds that we all just have peacocks just running around. Right, exactly. Hanging out in the neighborhood, attacking our cars. It, it's yeah. Hey, if you had that issue, you would you would not sleep at night. Yeah, they're actually. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's the like loudest freaking birds. It's a the cat. So yeah, it's a very cat-like. When cry. I was growing up in Downey, there was a there was a golf course called Los Amigos, and Los Amigos was right next to Los Padrinos, which was juvie. Okay, so you'd be on the first hole. Anyone Why'd from Downey knows this. <laughs> juvie. So you'd hit on the first hole, and it would go down. And if you were playing with adult guys, they would all of a sudden you'd hear there were uh, peacocks over there, and they would go. Let yeah. me out, let me out. Let and me they out. would sell you that it, that was the screams of boys being beaten. And it sounded, it did sound like eight-year-olds being hit with toasters or stuff like that. You're it giving was, Eric a flashback. Yeah. yeah, it was it was <laughs> bad stuff, man. For three minutes of off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Completely off the rails. Um, All right. We, um, don't, we don't set traps for peacocks, by the way. You can't. No. Oh, no. We just shoot them. Oh, don't say that. I hear they're delicious. Yeah. Well. They are yeah. like chicken and like turkeys. They're giant turkeys. Are they really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to go with it. <laughs> I have no idea where but to go with it. But they have very, very beautiful pl- plumage. Yeah, okay. Very nice. Did you have something for us animal-related? I thought you said you did. Animal-related? Yeah. Not necessarily animal-related. What, what, Stan- what about Stanford-related? Do you Stanford have like a Stanford related? memories? We got, we got a... What we are your Stanford a, moments from the so last week? It's been, what, three weeks a month yeah. since yeah. we've done the show. Yeah. Uh, and it's because... Uh, Eric and I have been out on the road working. Right. Uh, 17 baseball and softball games. Yeah. Oh. 17 over uh, a three-week span. Um, first, we had uh, the softball regionals. I was at Oregon. Um, he was at UCLA. And then we were together in wonderful, beautiful Stockton for the WCC championships. Yes. Um, we had a good walk off there. That was fun. Pepperdine yep. uh, almost pulled it out, but Gonzaga then pummeled them into the ground the next day. Oh. And <laughs> they got the... <laughs> They How does Gonzaga the rule that in baseball? I don't get it. They they've had a they've had a good couple uh, years. Some good starting pitching. We'll give them the basketball, yeah. but baseball belongs know, to Pepperdine surprising. and LMU, right? Yeah, yeah they uh, LMU actually uh, they like swept their way into this into the tournament in general and knocked out a couple teams in the yeah. last weekend. As they should, fun. as they should. But uh, we had the Stanford Regional um, in baseball, which uh, the big news out of there: Cal State Fullerton upsetting stanford um and i don't know if you guys saw it it made the it made the rounds on uh on twitter a lot uh the freshman phenom yes for oh jumbo Cal state fullerton uh jumbo it. chamberlain yeah. uh let's uh, i'm is i got the video right yeah, this, here oh, so. So, this is great. so west clemens I, I hear called that shot yeah west clemens was our yeah. uh it was west and roxy bernstein yeah. were our two uh was our Wes was very analyst. proud to tell me that he called that shot, and I told Wes I would mention him and, on, and on our show. Yeah, you know, this kid, uh, he just gave it a gave it a ride. We first were actually home run of the year, first Incredible. home run of the w- year. 
We were so excited when this happened because we had just done a 13 inning game the day before with Stanford, oh. and we were like, and oh, "Look at please. this guy circle the bases." You yeah, just, you hope he's he doesn't light get, on his feet though. He's, he's kind of very a, light right. on his feet. You hope yeah. he just doesn't get winded at this. Point. Runs on his toes. He was not a great interview. I will give him he, that, but uh, he, he was a he little. He uh, looks like Babe Ruth. You know, yeah. Babe Ruth those little legs of his. Right. Do, was do, like, do, 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 do. He was like John Goodman though. Yeah, that, yeah. It was like a movie. It was very it, much it, the natural movie coming out there. Yeah, it was uh, it was hilarious and it was fantastic. That was our one moment uh, from Stanford that we were. And the hair is great. The hair is great. You can't Cal cover State that hair up. Yeah. Cal State Fullerton, you know, they got a they have a fun team. Oh. Yeah. They have a real fun team. A lot Started of personality. Started one and seven. Yeah. And just got hammered by Stanford yeah. early in the season. And just completely turns their team. I mean, they they had problems with suspensions and the manager was a, it, it was it was a horrible I've always thought that Fullerton start. is the most overlooked local dominant program there is they're good every year they produce pro players every year and yet people always just kind of, even my school Long Beach State because they have a cool nickname dirt kind bags. Of, yeah, yeah dirt bags yeah. but the dirt bags haven't been good for a while yeah. Fullerton has been good since that God, the late seventies. Their bags great. made a super regional last year. Yeah, they, they got to the series Lost last year, didn't Fullerton. they? Lost oh, was to that, Fullerton. Oh, was that yeah. right? Oh, crap. Um, but Fullerton now it's what they've uh, won thirty games at least for something like forty years in a row. Unbelievable! They've yeah. made yeah. something thirty some uh, regionals in a row. They've what? They have what? The second most. Uh, I think second most super regional appearances. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the one who should be uh, telling us all this because yeah. he had all the graphics on it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Keep going, John. They, You're doing they, good. Yeah, whatever. I just I, I they are. Uh, I didn't even know much about Fullerton uh, uh, w until I moved out here. And uh, and yeah, Augie Garrido away. recently passed away, didn't he? Recently passed away so. when I when I first started the L.A. Times, I was in the Orange County uh, bureau, and you went and covered Fullerton, and oh, that Augie was, was the man. Every year they were yeah. turning out. Players of the Year, uh, say, top. Um, pick. Oh my lord! And and they would just win and win and win, and it, it's never stopped. And I, I always think it's odd that it it, it really doesn't get. It, if this was in another, if this was Texas or something like that, yeah. it'd be a big deal. But because it's Cal State Fullerton, it just kind of gets overlooked. And uh, I did mention Biff from Back to the Future. Yes. Oh. His son is the number two <laughs> starting pitcher. For Fullerton. Tommy Wilson. No. Tommy Wilson. No yes. Oh, my goodness. Tommy Wilson Sr. is Biff from Back to the Future, and he gets more fired up at these games than you could possibly imagine. One of our camera guys. Wait, wait, wait. Who? The dad or the, the kid? The dad. The dad. Oh, so he's a great Biff. camera. Biff is, and we put him on camera like crazy the first really? game. Really? Uh, Against Does he look like he's all made up and like the casino owner? He, he looks like old Biff at this point. <laughs> he's actually become. He's, he's old Biff. Yeah. And uh, one of our camera guys was right down there where he was, and uh, he's he's very inspirational. Uh, he's given a lot of inspirational quotes while screaming them at the top of his lungs. <laughs> uh, the one camera guy. <laughs> The one camera guy referred to him as said over our PL system. It's like Tony Robbins with swear words. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be known as that. You know, by the way, Tom Wilson in the 80s, I w he used to be a stand-up comic. He was very good. I used to go see he that. He still dude. does stand up from he time does? to time. Okay. Yeah, and uh, apparently he also has a, uh, a Christian music album. Of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, of course Why he not? does. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a lot of Biff. Uh, Biff and, is and doing Christian so, music. So, Fullerton is hosting Washington this weekend. Yes. Uh, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Okay. Super Regional. You have to win two out of three. Where is the Super Regional? In, in Fullerton. At Fullerton. Fullerton gets to host it for oh, some odd reason. Oh, wow. Okay. And, again, West Clemens is doing the game with, uh, I think, uh, Neely. Uh, Mike Neely is I'm not Martin. sure who is the yeah, play-by-play. So play. I'm going to have to go out to this yeah, thing. Just yeah. I just want to see Biff. <laughs> This is awesome. He'll be there. Yeah. He will be there. Ah, this has been a pleasure. It's been great to be back with you. We appreciate it. We want to thank everybody who's stuck with us and stuck through this whole thing, especially, especially that really Steve. awkward talk about PFAL, which I really yeah. and still kind of. I'm sorry. Uh, it just it, it it's it's in my craw right now. Oh lord. I Anyways, don't, I don't want to compete with raccoons, but PFALs. <laughs> I, I got nothing. Thank you very much. Uh, follow us on, please, give them all the... Uh, we got farther off the wall. We will have a website that's called... Very soon. The Drill LA. LA. Mm -hmm. The Driller. We have a domain, mm -hmm. which we've claimed to stake to. That's right. Um, we have uh, Twitter, Tom Hofarth. We have Twitter, Steve Lowry. Steve Lowry 12. 12. Yep. We have John's on Twitter. 
We're going to get Nicole on Twitter. Yeah. Sweet. So you can you can tell her uh, very private things, and then she'll tell people about it later. Kind of Put throw you, you under all a bus. on blast, you That's weirdos. That's Nicole's thing, yeah. We're going to talk to Nicole about uh, getting our website up and running. I Sweet. Think we've understood that she's a, uh, a young person who may know some things. Right. <laughs> she could so. probably set the clock on your VCR. Oh my God! Finally. Actually, she's probably too young to know what a VCR is. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even remember that. I never got to see that third Back to so the Future, so that will, would be great. Yeah, we will yeah. promote the show somehow. You will find it on YouTube. You'll find it on that Facebook. It's on MySpace, I believe. <laughs> All right, no. now we're just digging a grave. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate it. We'll see All you right. next week. Bye.